Hey y'all and welcome back or if you're new around here, hello and welcome. My name is Katie Marie and today I'm doing a video that I always look forward to doing. I am ranking all the palettes that I've tried in 2022 so far. So I did this last year where halfway through the year I gathered all the palettes that I had reviewed so far and I ranked them all from best or from worst to best I guess I should say. From worst all the way to best and then at the end of the year I did it again just to break it up and so it's not such a long video of doing like all the palettes that I try in a year because that would get to be a long video. But anyway I do it halfway and then at the end of the year after I've done all that kind of into the new year I battle the two halves of the year and it's just a fun tradition that, that I started on my channel and I want to make sure I continue doing it for 2022. I know July is over last year I shared this video in July but we're in August I'm just now posting it I'm so sorry. Some things happened as you're gonna find out in this video because half of the video I'm gonna have this face on and then the last half of the video I'm gonna have a totally different makeup look because I already filmed this video. And then when I went to edit it, I had lipstick on my teeth for half of the video. And at first I was like, it's fine. Lipstick gets on your teeth, Katie. It's no big deal. Just edit it and put the video out. It's, it's not a big deal. But as I was editing the video, and it wasn't just a little bit of lipstick, like just a little bit on my tooth. It was like almost all over one of my teeth. And like I said, it was half of the video. And it was just, it was just so distracting. I didn't even want to edit it after a while. I was just like, this looks so bad. So I'm here today to refilm that first half. And then at the last half of the video, you're going to see a different look, different day. It's going to be a whole different makeup look. But hey, you get two different makeup looks in the same video. But that's the main reason why this video didn't go up in July. But we're doing it in August. So I'm going to keep this uh, intro short and sweet because I'm already chatting a little too much here at the beginning. I've checked my teeth a million times. Let's go ahead and just jump right into it, ranking them from the worst all the way up to the very best palette that I tried from the year so far. Okay, first up, we're going to start with the very bottom. So this is, in my opinion, the worst palette from the year. And I'm actually kind of happy to see that this is the worst palette because looking back over all the palettes I've tried so far in 2022, there really hasn't been a, like, a horrible palette. So from all the palettes I'm going to talk about, the two at the very bottom are, in my opinion, not the best quality, but they're still used. And then from that point on up, it's just all preference wise, honestly, when it comes to where I ranked all the palettes. So anyway, starting at the very bottom, Lunar Beauty Eternal Eclipse. I decided to put this one at the very bottom of my countdown just because not only is it a very, very neutral palette that I'm not super into, it's a cool tone neutral, but I wasn't the biggest fan of the shimmer formula in this palette and the matte formula was okay. I wasn't super impressed with the gray in this palette. The brown's kind of all, all muddy together for me. I don't know. As a whole, I really had to force myself to play with this palette and then looking back at all the looks that I did and kind of looking back and thinking back of my time using this, it just didn't stand out to me and it was a palette I was very ready to be done with and I don't miss it at all. And thinking back over the looks, I don't really have any fond memories. If you guys saw my most recent palette declutter video, I actually decluttered this palette. So it's in my two, like leaving my collection pile, but I figured I'd pull it in and just show you guys for the video since I do still have it in my room right now. I did want to show you, but it is <laughs> decluttered from my collection. So that should tell you right there. It just did not stand out to me at all. So hence why it's getting a very bottom of this countdown. Next up, and as I said, this palette I also wasn't super thrilled about. This is the LA Girl Cosmetics Festi Bestie palette. And the biggest reason this is getting so low is mainly for the mattes. The shimmers, while they're they're not like super colorful and super fun, they do for the most part all show up well. And except for this one, this one was pretty crummy and difficult to work with. And then like this one was more just uh, a more of a subtle shade but besides those they all like showed up really well they're very beautiful on the eyes but the mattes in here is really where it fell flat for me this matte black was a little tricky to work with I was never super impressed and then the mattes you know there's a lot of very neutral mattes but they didn't stand out they didn't pack a punch like I remembered their formula from their main stage palette that I love so much last year I think 2021 or 2022 they certainly didn't stand out like that and the most you know exciting matte colors in here that I was excited to work with were was this orange down here and then this lime green which honestly on the website when I went to purchase it I felt like look a lot more saturated than it actually does in person and then when you actually use it in person it's a lot thinner so you can almost like this green you almost can't really see like you have to build it up a lot so it just was a huge letdown for me like, having such high expectations for it after trying a main stage palette and just being so in love with that formula the intensity of those colors the matte formula in that palette was so very nice this one just wasn't really all that in my opinion so that's why it's getting pretty far down however it is a little more colorful than the Lunar Beauty Eternal Eclipse hence why it's getting above that but it's just I don't know it was a big letdown for me so it didn't get very high in my countdown next step is going to be the flawless cosmetics tropical paradise palette this palette is getting a little low not only because you can't get it anymore the brand no longer exists I feel bad that by the time I reviewed it, I'm pretty sure the brand had shut down but also too while I really did enjoy the colorful variety that you can find in this palette having a matte and a shimmer of both the you know all the colors of the rainbow and having just that staple palette there wasn't enough depth in here when it came to the colors and the shimmers were a little bit you know they were just uh, a little subtle and they're not subtle they just were more heavy on you know giving you a nice 
nice uh, like wash of color, nice pigment, but they didn't have a lot of sparkle. They didn't have a lot of like metallicness to it. They were just nice and decent shimmers. But the biggest letdown for me was that, that there wasn't enough depth when it came to the mattes in this. So all the looks that I got, I just wanted something darker to really ground the looks. And that's why for me, while I did enjoy how bright these colors were and how bright of a rainbow type of look and like almost neon my looks turned out, I really did miss not having some depth in there to kind of ground the looks. And just even if it was just one black I could have added to this, I probably would have liked the looks that I created with this a lot more than I did. So that's why I'm putting it pretty darn low, but it's not a terrible formula, and I did enjoy the matte formula for what it was. Another palette that I'm ranking is actually one you can't get any longer. It's from Ace Beauté's Nostalgia Palette. It's a nice palette. It's got a fun color story, very unique and different, but comparing it to Ace Beauté's formula that I've tried now, like the Tropical Vibes palette that I absolutely love, or even their Palettopoly that just they just released not too long ago, there's definitely something different when it comes to this formula in this palette, and it's just not as nice as what I've experienced in their more recent palettes, so I don't know if that's why they just continued it or this was just an old formula they were kind of phasing out and trying to get rid of and then once the stock was gone that's why they discontinued it but whatever the case is I definitely noticed in using this that there were times where maybe shades didn't want to build up as nicely or they didn't want to mesh as nicely as I experienced typically with their newer palettes as I was saying and their shimmers the shimmers were nice I didn't really have any big complaints there's only three in here but it was really the mattes working with the mattes there were sometimes that it was a little questionable when I was working to blend it or I had to work a little harder to blend it out so hence why I'm putting it a little low but I did create a couple looks that I really did enjoy so not at the bottom but it just didn't land very high in my countdown also too it's very heavy on the pinks and the, you know the more purpley tones but very heavy on the pinks and reds so you guys know me I love blues greens and yellows I know I say it all the time okay next up is going to be playing a makeup by Yolanda now this is not getting this low in the countdown because it's bad formula because I absolutely love the formula in these palettes but this is a little five pan and palettes. I think they're called the Infinity Collection and this is the Hashtag Expressions palette. This palette is only getting this low because it is such a monochromatic palette that I really struggled to get variety when it came to this palette so that's why it's not landing super high in my countdown. I like to be able to get a lot of different type of looks and just to be able to feel like I have a range when it comes to palettes and even though this is a monochromatic palette, I don't know, I just like a little bit of variety when it comes to different type of looks and for me I think I created three looks with this and pretty much all of them looked almost identical. Like there was little differences but not much. So overall that's a biggest reason it's getting low is just for preference wise and the type of looks I can get. The matte formula in here is absolutely beautiful. This shimmer here, both the shimmers are beautiful, but this one definitely has a shift. As you can see, like it looks very like greenish, but actually from the side, it has a very strong, like deep blue, almost purple shift to it. I don't know if you guys can really see that. It's gorgeous. It's definitely very shifty and beautiful. So very pretty. And if you like the tones in this palette or you like this palette to add to your collection and whatnot to get different type of looks, then I think this is totally worth it. But for me as a standalone palette, that's why it's landing so low. Oh, DD Signature. They did shut down this year. Uh, past couple months, I think they announced it. And I'm still sad every time I think about it. But this is her, the Neutral Wonder Palette Eyeshadow. I think she launched at the end of the year. I tried it around New Year's. So this is one of the first palettes I tried in 2022. And while I do agree that her shimmers really brought something beautiful and special to the neutral eye look, like all of the shimmers in here are, were just so beautiful. So much fun to work with, like so stunning so blinding like oh my goodness absolutely beautiful however for me the mattes is where it just kind of was like a little boring for me and I just felt like I couldn't couldn't I couldn't get a range and I couldn't get very creative and you know have a lot of fun when it came to my crease work I mean these two browns felt very very similar and then these two dark browns also felt very similar so for me I felt like I tried to kind of change it up and do different things when it came to my crease but for the most part they it all kind of just looked the same and whatever I put on the lid is what changed up the look so for me while I do love her formula the mattes and the shimmers and formula in this were very very nice it was more so the color story as to why I'm landing it so low because as we continue on I'm gonna be talking about a lot of really fun fun color stories fun palettes great formulas all that set type of thing so when I was thinking back and trying to figure out where I would put this neutral palette I had to land it right here it's not the bottom I mean it is a neutral palette that got fairly high in my countdown for being a very neutral palette so I thought that was impressive but for me the mattes is where I just want a little bit more variety okay menagerie's Flight Club palette is coming up next, and this palette is landing a little low in the countdown, or at least at the bottom half of the countdown, because it is a purple palette, and I'm just not super into purple palettes, and that's really the only reason this is landing low, because
because when it came to like variety and the type of looks that I could get with this, they were all very, very purple. There was a little bit of variety that I can appreciate because there's different ranges of purples and some were a little bit more on the red tones of purples, some were more lavender, some were, you know, deep grape and whatnot. So I appreciate that with this palette being so big, you still got variety. However, they were all very purpley. And by the third look, I was kind of like, I'm done. But I'm like, this is a 12 pan palette. You should probably do more than three looks with it. So I kind of had to force myself to do it. But overall, I think it was a really nice palette. The only thing that would have made it a little bit better for me and honestly would have put it a couple rankings higher in my countdown would have been if it had a really deep matte purple. That's definitely what it was missing for me. I wanted like the deep, deep grape purple matte. Oh, that would have been so beautiful. But it doesn't have any really deep outer corner colors besides this one right here, which doesn't get that deep. So that's what it was missing for me. And that's why I decided to place it right here in the countdown. But formula wise, it's very nice. The uh, mattes, of course, are beautiful. And the shimmers, for the most part, they were all lovely. Next up, another DD signature. This is the Pumpkin Spice Quad. And the only reason this is getting at the bottom half of this countdown is because it is a quad. There's only four shades and there's only two mattes, two shimmers. But this color story, I absolutely love. The quality of this, I absolutely love. The mattes were so beautiful, so pigmented. And the shimmers, like, oh, my goodness her shimmers I mean I talk I've already talked about them with the the neutral palette but like look at that oh so beautiful both of these have a very special type of shift to them both of them are just absolutely blinding both of them are so smooth I think you can still get some DD signature palettes on her website because she is ha leaving her site up until she runs out of stock and the last time someone mentioned her brand they said that you could still get some palettes so if you can still get it if you like these colors I would definitely recommend it because it's just a great little palette you have something for your crease something for your outer corner and then two shimmers however you want to mix it up but it is getting a little bit low because when it comes to the you know how much variety you can get with this look it is a quad with you know only one dark matte one light matte so I felt like a little bit limited in the type of looks that I could get with this but regardless the the look that I got with this when I used all of these like this in the crease this in the outer corner and maybe one of these on the lids oh, they were so beautiful so stunning I really do love this color combination okay next up is going to be Adept Cosmetics Heather Austin palette. This is my one and only Adept palette, but this is a gorgeous palette that Heather Austin put together. She did a fantastic job. I absolutely love the mattes in this palette. These two, of course, that's where my heart was. I, I enjoyed every single look that I did with the, the mustard green and this dark green combination. So very pretty. And then when it came to the shimmers, I like some of the formulas, others not so much. There are three multi-crumbs, which I think is video chat, scrubs, and smith. Obviously, smith was my favorite because it's like a dirty gold to green. Absolutely beautiful, but I really like the multi-chrome formula. It's very smooth, very easy to work with. The shift is really strong. Very, very pretty. But there's a couple formulas in here, like Austin. Like, it's so pretty, but it's so crumbly that I didn't love working with it because it just made a mess everywhere. And then this kind of uh, corner over here with the pinks. I don't know. I just wasn't super into pinks. So there's aspects of this palette that I really love and aspects of this palette that I'm just kind of like, ah, you know, it's not my favorite. So hence why it's getting right in the middle of my countdown when it comes to you know worst to best. It's not, it's definitely not a bad palette at all but just depending on what you like when it comes to the shimmer formula if you like you know if you don't mind a mess and you like all the intense sparkle you like it to look like there's just liquid sparkle on your eyes you'll probably love this palette or you'll love Adept's formula for sure because they have some intense sparkle intense like just liquid liquid shine on their eyes but overall it was a really nice palette I was super excited to get finally get to try Adept Cosmetics and super happy for Heather Austin she did a great job putting this color story together next up is gonna be what's up beauty this is their new geodes palette. This palette was so much fun. And honestly, uh, as I was talking about the uh, Depth Cosmetics palette, the shimmers in the What's Up Beauty palette almost remind me of some of the formulas or the intensity of the sparkle that Adept has in their palettes. But I do like with this formula, it being a little bit more user friendly. They're not as messy to put on. They're not as messy to wear throughout the day, but they're still super shiny and beautiful and shifty. And just, let's see, I think my, of course, my favorite color was this green. So very beautiful, so very shiny and also kind of a step up from their last palette which was very neutral they have a little bit of a mustardy tone in there a little bit of a, a green brown in there I really enjoyed their mattes there was one two three four five mattes in this palette and then a bunch of beautiful shimmers I think the first look I ever created with this was my favorite because I used the yellow the green the mustard and this kind of greeny brown over here and it just the color combination was beautiful I did a look 
uh, on my channel if you want to see it. But that was definitely my favorite. But overall, it's just a really nice formula. The mattes in, in What's Up Beauty palettes are so nice. They're so pigmented. And the only kind of like a uh, warning I would give is that sometimes, especially the darker shades, can show up a little more intense and more have more depth to it than they look in the pan. But I love that. That's not a con for me. But I just always like to throw it out if that would be a con for you. And then the shimmers, like I said, they're just, they're just a little bit on the neutral side. So that's the only reason it's landing low. Like I hope What's Up Beauty comes out with a very colorful palette when it, at least when it comes to their shimmers and maybe you know a couple creative mattes in there would be a lot of fun but if they came out with like a rainbow palette for all like all of like light bright shades in these shimmer formulas the shimmer formulas are so pretty that would be so much fun so yeah I uh, I'm really big fan of the formula and I'm just eagerly waiting for what's up beauty to come out with a more you know colorful color story but the two palettes that they put out quality is great. It's so good. All right, next up is going to be the Wealthy Chick from Colored Rain. This eyeshadow palette was just a lot of fun. The only reason it's landing a little bit low in comparison to the other palettes we'll talk about later is because these two shimmers, while they look pretty different in the pan, when you actually use them on their eyes, they're not that different. And then these two, I, or not those two, these two, and these two kind of a little bit close. Or you could just like use this and lighten it up to get this type of look on your eyes, if that makes sense. So, tad bit repetitive for having six shades. I was a little disappointed. That I couldn't get more like more range and more different type of eye looks and just felt like I could be a little bit more creative and different with each eye look than I was able to get but when we're talking about formula oh my goodness it is so nice these shimmers are so smooth so easy to pick up with a brush they go on and look like liquid on the eyes they're gorgeous that they're beautiful they're stunning and then the mattes are really nice very pigmented very smooth they feel very soft they pick up easy with the brush and they blend beautifully so definitely a big fan of these but just wish that maybe there was like the shimmers were a little bit more different or like one of those mattes were a little bit more different but I do appreciate this shade in there because it definitely helps take this the whole looks you can get with this to a different level having that beautiful grungy color I love this color I don't even know what you would call this shade but I love it Okay, next up is going to be from a brand called Saints Angel Sinners, and I do want to throw out here really quick. Now, this brand was is recently in some drama around how she treats people in her DMs, specifically like customers or influencers that she's talked to privately in DMs. And over the past month or so, it came out these people were sharing their stories of how they uh, how their interactions with this brand owner has gone, and it hasn't been the best. I don't want to get into it in here because it would honestly take up a big chunk of the video, and it is extensive. So if you're someone who wants to kind of be aware of what is going on. I'm gonna link one or two Instagram pages down below and if you go to their pages and look at their highlights you'll find a saved highlight about Saints Angel Centers and if you read through all of that they also link to other people who share their stories and you can go to their pages and find their stories saved to highlight so instead of leaving a ton of links to everyone's stories I'm gonna try to find one or two people that I know within their highlights kind of shares everyone's stories so if you want to be made aware of the situation that's going on you can read their stories I do still want to however mention this in my video because I did try it this past year as you guys have heard in this video alone whether it's discontinued or not or maybe involved in a bit of the brands involved in more scandal if I've tried it I try to just review the product or just mention and talk about the product itself and if there's fresh drama going on I try to mention it just so if you want to be made aware you can do that but I'm just gonna talk about this palette from the palette quality itself so let's talk about get lucky palette like I said I don't think you can get this anymore but this palette really impressed me I was super super blown away by how nice of a formula she has in here I'm not someone who tends to like all shimmer palettes but this this is an exception just because of how lovely it is. Like I was saying with the Depth Cosmetics formula, I like their, their liquidy shadows and their more uh, chunky or you know loose formulas are so pretty on the eyes, but they're just so messy to work with. These will give you that intensity that you see with those type of shadows. Like they're so sparkly, they're so beautiful. Some of them, especially like Rabbit's Foot, look like liquid on your eyes. They're so beautiful. I've shared a lot of uh, tutorials over on Instagram if you're at all curious. However, they're very easy to work with. They're very smooth. They go on the eyes pretty easy and they last pretty well all day and the colors that you have like rabbit's foot let me just go ahead and show you is very shifty depending on what you put it with it kind of depends on what colors stand out but overall I just liked how smooth of a formula this is how easy it is to work with but yet at the same time how much sparkle and just gorgeousness you get on your eyes so I was very impressed with this palette and I had to put it relatively high in my countdown when we're talking about a shimmer palette they don't tend to get very high on my channel but I was impressed with the formula in here so up next is going to be Menagerie Cosmetics Sugar High Palette. This palette, if you just like colorful, fun looks and you just want to be like super creative when it comes to the type of looks you create, this is a great palette to have. And the shimmers in this palette, Menagerie did a great job with the shimmers. Overall, I was very impressed with the shimmer quality and the formula in this palette. The only thing that I wish is it had a little more depth to it when it came to the mattes because all the mattes were pretty pastel. But it did give me a lot of really fun and unique looks. And they're the type of looks that anytime I come across them, even now, I look at that and I can immediately go like, oh, 
That's from the Menagerie Sugar High Palette because it's just such a unique color combo when it came to creating looks with it that it's easy for me to pick out. And I always like when a palette stands out like that that their looks are just so unique you can just spot it from a distance type of thing. So definitely had to get pretty high in my countdown. Another Playing in Makeup by Yolanda palette. This is basic, hashtag basic, and this is an all matte palette. If you want a pigmented rainbow all matte palette, look no farther than this little guy. I mean, it's just so insanely pigmented. You definitely get staining because of how intense these colors are. But like if you want a true hot pink, this is a great hot pink. If you want a true red, oh my goodness, this brick red is just so stunning. Same with the purple, like all of them are just so intensely saturated. They are so much fun to work with and I had so much fun creating all matte looks as well as just using this with other shimmer palettes or other shimmer shadows that I have. It's fantastic. The quality is just up there with some of the best matte eyeshadows I've ever tried. So definitely had to put this high in my countdown. Not super, super high because it is just five, you know, five shadows, but definitely very high in my countdown. All right, next in the ranking is the Playing in Makeup by Yolanda hashtag Friends palette. This palette, I am sure, comes as no surprise to rank so high just because the tones, you guys know I love these type of tones. The mustard is so beautiful. The grungy greens are so beautiful. This is a shimmer, which I feel like I wouldn't have minded being something different, but I actually just treated it like a really dark outer corner matte shadow, and I really enjoyed the looks that I got with it as well. It, it worked just fine in my outer corner, and then this shimmer, I'm holding it carefully because it's a little bit crumbly, and I don't want to make a mess, but this shimmer is so intense and beautiful. Like I'll just put a little on my finger and just like oh look at that. It's just it's very intense It's like liquid liquid chrome or something. It is beautiful on the eyes so stunning and it just goes on so smoothly as well It's not like heavily textured It's not difficult to transfer with a flat brush I just it was a dream working with this palette and I really did enjoy the tones of course They're my type of tones. So yeah, I really really like this palette had a great time with it had to rank high Okay, moving right along, we're gonna talk about another Playing in Makeup by Yolanda palette. This is the Mixture palette, and I'm going to keep it closed because of this shade. <laughs> has been just abused in my collection. I am so very sorry to say. Um, I dropped it initially, repressed it, and then my son found it and made it not pressed anymore, and so I repressed it. So this this shade is just very sad and has had a really rough time in my collection. I am so sorry to say, but it is gorgeous, so I didn't want to just throw it away. This is absolutely beautiful, and then all the mattes in here, like I was saying with that all matte palette, the red and purples and ye oh, yellows and oranges, the mattes in here are just as intense, just as beautiful, just as creamy smooth. This is a really deep dark green and this is a really nice like cobalt blue. And then these two tones, I created so many beautiful looks with this. It definitely has to be, when I'm thinking about all the little five pan palettes, has to be my favorite. Just because of how creative I was able to be with the looks that I got from it and just the quality is so nice. Okay, this is ranking high and not so much like for quality, like blowing my mind, but for affordability and creativity when it came to the color story. And this is Profusion Desert Sage. I definitely am not holding this up saying that this Desert Sage quality of the eyeshadow palette is better than like playing in makeup by Yolanda that I just talked about. Absolutely not. Like there's no comparison with some of these shadows, especially the, you know, the lighter tones. There's just like no comparison when comparing playing in makeup by Yolanda's intense saturated mattes and these. However, being able to get this at Walmart, having it come from a more affordable brand, having this many options when it comes to like colorful but still earthy tones, I had to rank it high because I really did enjoy the looks that I got out of it. it was, I was able to be very creative in a very large range of different type of looks, like from blues and purples to more like very neutral and browns to more like grungy tones to more like mustardy tones. I was really happy with it. I didn't try the glitter in the middle, so I'm not reviewing that at all, but overall I was pretty impressed, so I had to rank this high in my countdown. Next up is going to be from Kylob. This is the Art Nouveau palette. I think this is their most recent launch. And this was a fun rainbow palette. I really enjoyed playing with this. It's a fun rainbow palette in the way that it's very, it's like a rainbow palette, but it's still curated in the, in the type of looks that you can get from it, if that makes sense. I feel like sometimes when I think rainbow palette, it's like you have a red shimmer and a red matte. You have a blue shimmer and a blue matte. That way you can get those very rainbow-esque looks. Whereas this is more so, yes, it has all the colors of the rainbow, but the orange is a shimmer and that's the only orange you get. The yellow is a matte that's the only that's the only yellow you get that type of thing and I really enjoyed that in this it really created a lot of very beautiful looks I loved having the matte black in there like I created so many deep really rich and like jeweled type of looks and I created more lighter tone type of looks as well and just more bold and almost not really neon that intense but very colorful and very rainbow-esque type of looks so rambling on and on per usual but I had to rank this high because I enjoyed the quality of the mattes and the shimmers I would say the shimmers in this if you've never tried Kylov's shimmers. They're more of just a really nice shimmer. They're nothing like super unique and sparkly. Like if you're thinking Adept or St. 
angel centers or even colored rain like what I have on my eyes. Nothing to let that level, but they're very nice pigmented smooth shimmers. Okay, next up, I'm gonna place the Kaleidos Flower Punk Palette. This palette, I know I was super late to the game. Oh, it makes such a mess, but I was super late to the game with this palette. I missed it at the initial launch and it took me a while to actually review it once I got my hands on it. But this palette was so much fun and the looks, again, it's a type of palette where the looks that I created with it, I can easily spot like a mile away when I'm scrolling on my Instagram. I'm like, oh yeah, that came from the Kaleidos palette because it just stands out so much, so unique. I love the grunge with the pastel. The only kind of downside for me with this palette was I wasn't crazy about the shimmers and there's only three so not a big downside to the palette but overall it was a really nice palette I had a lot of fun definitely highly recommend and yeah I knew this was going to rank really high in my countdown top 10 for sure next up is going to be the Odin's Eye and Angelica Nyquist the Hila palette or Hela palette I forget exactly how you pronounce it but this palette right here was a lot of fun. Again, it's full of those colors that I just absolutely love. Like the top two rows were just kind of my jam. When it came to those grungy greens and grungy mustards, I had so much fun. And then mix and matching it with these more pinky tones was a lot of fun and kind of took me outside of what I would normally do because like I say all the time, I'm not into pinks and purples, but having the pinks in here, I combined the pinks with the grunge and I really love the combo. The shimmers in here were really pretty. This shade right here, double-sided the prettiest and most smoothest shade ever. I, I know I shouldn't be touching all of them, but I just have to like look at how special that is. It's just such a unique shade and it was so very pretty to use in looks. So yeah, this had to rank really high in my countdown just because of what a good color story it is. Angelica did such a great job. And then Odin's Eye Formula, the mattes are always perfection. And then the shimmers that they put in this palette are just one of my faves. Next up is going to be Nomad Cosmetics Snow Whistler Lodge. This palette right here has got so many memories for me because it was, it was a tough time in my pregnancy. I can say that. I was definitely battling a lot of the nausea, but this color story was really fun for me to explore. I really love the rich greens and blues in here especially, but then the reds in here as well was unexpected twist to the palette. And also this blue is like a dual chrome and it can look purple depending on the shade or like the colors you use it with. So it was an unexpected twist having that purpley tones in it as well. So overall, the type of looks that I got were very, very pretty. I really enjoyed this palette. Quality wise, it's absolutely stunning. Mattes are just per usual when it comes to Nomad mattes. They're one of my favorite formulas when it comes to their mattes. So having so many great mattes in here and fun colors that I enjoyed putting together I had to rank it high. On the heels of that, okay, this palette, I technically haven't reviewed it in a Palette Palooza countdown review video, which is kind of was my criteria for doing the first half of the year because I was like, let me you know, go to all of my Palette Palooza videos and grab all the palettes that I've reviewed in 2022. However, we are in July and I did just film set, oh no, eight looks with this palette, so I have officially reviewed it. I've set it aside to include in my next Palette Palooza. However, like I said, I finished reviewing this in July, so I was like, ah, should I put it in here should I not I'm gonna include it in today's video and that is the newest nomad palette the Fiettes de Provence I'm sure I'm butchering it but I'm so sorry this palette right here this palette is some like unexpectedly fun for me like I really didn't expect to you know be over the moon about it because the tones in here are very purple and pink and I say it all the time not into those very much however I had so much fun with this. I did a seven looks video and each of the looks I thought were so very fun and so very, like I enjoyed wearing it. I think only one of them was more like a very pink, it was very heavy on the pinky purples and I was like, oh, this is a look. But besides that, I really did enjoy this palette. I love the addition of the grays in it and the purples with the lilac-y gray tone. I really did enjoy that those tones when it came to creating looks on my eyes. So it surprised me by how much I liked this and I had to rank it very high in my countdown. And of course, this middle row, was my favorite, obviously, because you got the mustards, the, the grungy mustard, and then this yellow was just the most special shimmery yellow ever. And yeah, overall shimmers, mattes, everything about this palette I really like, so I had to rank it in what, what is this, my top five? It got, it easily got to my top five because I was so impressed. Okay, next up is another Nomad palette. <laughs> I know, I didn't mean to do that on purpose. Anyway, Nomad, this is the Paradise Islands palette. This palette was such a fun spring palette. I really did enjoy it. Like the type of looks that you got, it's just this gorgeous kind of spring, like I said, springy rainbow. It's not super pastelish, but it's not super neon either. So I was able to create just the perfect type of spring eye looks on my eyes. And I absolutely love these greeny tones up here. So very nice, so very fun. And yeah, I feel like I'm a broken record at this point because I've already talked about two other Nomad palettes but quality of the mattes are amazing. My favorite when it comes to matte formulas and then the shimmers in here, I really, there were a lot of really special ones that I really did enjoy. There were a couple that were more just kind of like, they didn't excite me too much, but oh my gosh, this green and then this blue. 
there were a lot of shimmers in here that got me excited, so had to rank this one high as well. Okay, are we, <laughs> we're on to top two. I am getting tired, y'all. But anyway, this is going to be the Playing in Makeup by Yolanda Color Scheme Pro 777 Eyeshadow Palette. I did a seven looks video on as well as a first impression, so I have eight looks on my channel featuring this palette. It is a beautiful palette, but I think the thing I love most about it and why it got so high is because it's not just a green theme palette. Yes, it's heavy on the greens, but you can get so many fun and interesting type of looks with this palette. I created so many looks that incorporated a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue, a little bit of pink, a little bit of like lavender and whatnot. I love that each of the looks could have another color, but it still had that green that I liked. So all of the looks I really did enjoy. And quality wise, mattes are really nice. And the shimmers, I think there were how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten shimmers in here. And the majority of them I absolutely love. Like I was so excited every time I had to use them. So definitely a huge palette, but it was a lot of fun. So I had to rank it high. Okay, the number one, unless I've forgotten a palette, which I really hope I haven't, because that's always annoying. But for my number one palette, out of all the palettes I've tried so far, in 2022, I had to give it to Blend Bunny Cosmetics Blends Palette. Oh my goodness. This palette is so nice. I am someone who really does enjoy an all matte look, but also like if you're someone who has a lot of shimmers, when I was testing out the Get Lucky palette from St. Angel Sinners, I used it paired with this like all the time because that was all shimmer, this was all matte. It's just a great palette to have. If you're someone who wants a really like good, stable rainbow palette, like look no farther than this because it gives you all the different shades of that color that you need to use to work and blend into eye looks. And I just found it very effortless and fun and the type of looks that you can get, you can be so very creative with a color story like this. But on top of that, I mean, the biggest you know kind of plus for this palette, not only is it just a great big rainbow palette, but it's a fantastic formula. Like it is such a nice formula. I was super impressed. Definitely a huge fan of Blend Bunny Cosmetics eyeshadow formula now. I'm definitely gonna be picking up more of her palettes. She's about to launch her primal palette. I'm gonna be picking that palette up because this impressed me so much. I love the tones that I'm seeing in her primal palette and I wanna try her shimmers. So we'll see how the two kind of compare to each other. I'm definitely very curious to see with the mattes that she chose for the primal palette, how it compares and if you need both the blends and the primal. I'm just really curious to try another palette from her. So super excited for her, but yes. Getting back to the topic at hand, this had to win at number one because it's just such a fantastic eyeshadow quality when it comes to mattes. So easy and wonderful to blend. Not super expensive for how many eyeshadows you're getting in here and you can use, you know, affiliate codes. I don't have one, but you can use affiliate codes to get it even cheaper. And she does sales not infrequently. So definitely a fantastic indie brand, I would say, to check out and support if you are at all interested. Super impressed with this palette. All right, so that is gonna do it for my ranking. All of the palettes I've tried in 2022 so far, six months worth of palettes. I think it was, like I said, around 25 palettes. In previous years, I've definitely done more, but this year, while I didn't do as many, I was happy to see that how many are just fantastic palettes. Like I said, it was so hard to rank them because once I got past the first few that were just kind of like, eh, whatever. Oh my goodness, it's so hard to rank fantastic palettes because they were all so, so, so nice. Like, how do you rank one at number 20 if you really did enjoy it? But I had to rank them some more, so that is where I'm placing them in my ranking. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video per usual. Let me know your thoughts down below, and if you're able to guess where I rank things, were you able to guess my number one palette? I feel like that's always one I'm curious to know. And I can't wait to see at the end of the year when I go and rank the rest of 2022 and then battle them out, how it all ends up and how that all works out. That's always a fun video for me to do after after 2022 or after the year's over. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. As always, I'm over on Instagram if you wanna check me out over there and get daily content from me. I'm LadyKatie92. And with all that said, that'll do it for me. I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye guys.